Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be continuing the discussion with respect to pandas. In our previous tutorial, we have already seen how to read CSV file and then we try to play with different properties inside read underscore CSV. And if you have not seen guys, again, go through the playlist. I have provided the playlist URL in the description. Now we'll try to read some JSON data or it may be a JSON file, any kind of JSON information. Let us see how we can basically read with the help of pandas. Again, uh, suppose this is my JSON over here. Okay, so I have employee name uh, and JSON is basically just like a key value pairs, a combination of key value pairs of JSON data. Now here you can basically see employee underscore name is equal to James, email is equal to James at the rate gmail.com. And here you have a nested JSON. So you have job underscore profile, title one team lead, title two senior developer and many more information. What we can do is that we can take up this data like this and then we can use a function which is called as pd.read underscore json. If I press shift tab, here you can see that I just have to provide the path of the file or path of the information or the variable that I have. There is one more parameter which is called as orient which we'll discuss in just a while. But just understand that as soon as I provide this particular data, if I execute it, you can see that automatically this json is getting converted into a data frame. Now, one thing that you have to note over here is that if you have a nested information like this, okay, at that time, this will not get exactly converted into uh, columns. Instead, the last keyword that you see over here, it will be taken as this. Whenever there is a nested structure that will get displayed directly over here. But if you want to display this further down, you may have to basically take up this particular data frame, read all the information because these are just key value pairs. You can basically use dictionaries. In short, this can be also termed as dictionaries, right? Um, because I have key value pairs. I can read that and I can again create a different columns. And again, in the exploratory data analysis, I'll be showing you more examples. But understand that this is pretty much simple. Any kind of JSON information can be read through the help of read underscore JSON and it can be directly converted into a data frame. Now, the other thing is that suppose I want to also read. So there is something called as wine dot data. I want to read from this. A particular data information it is in json format you just go to this particular url and you just download this dot, dot data file you will be seeing that it is basically in a json format so i basically use this url i have kept header is equal to none and once i read it right once i read it you can see that my head part will basically be showing all the information that i have in this particular data and the best part is that i did not have to download it i am directly reading it from some particular url Okay, pretty much simple, pretty much uh, useful actually. And remember, this kind of structure will only come when in your JSON data, you have just a key and value pairs. Suppose if you have nested values, at that time, it will become difficult for parsing. So you have to write custom parsing also. And again, as I promised you that, I'll be showing you that example in exploratory data analysis. If not, what I'll do is that in, in the upcoming videos, I'm also going to show you the tutorial of MongoDB. In that particular tutorial, we'll be basically discussing how nested JSON can be basically extracted and be, uh, loaded in uh, loaded it using the uh, pandas uh, library itself. So let us go and uh, still more we'll discuss about this. Now, once we have read this JSON, we have converted into a data frame. Now what we can do is that we can basically convert it, this into a CSV file. So over here, you can see that I'm converting this JSON data to CSV file. Again, I'm saying two underscore CSV wine dot CSV, right? So this is my wine dot CSV file. So as soon as I execute this, you can see that if I go and open this particular location, uh, wine dot CSV is actually created. Pretty much simple because two underscore CSV is always present, right? And it is for every other information. Now, it may also have, you may also have a scenario that you need to convert your whole data frame into, uh, you know, a JSON. So at that time, you can use an inbuilt function called as two underscore JSON. So if you go and press shift tab over here, again, you can see that all the information are here. Uh, but in this, uh, it, it basically converts the object into a JSON string. Okay. So let us go and try to understand some of the parameters. So first of all, I'm going to remove this and let me just convert this into a JSON. Okay. So, uh, instead of just converting this, let me, let me just take a very simple example. First of all, let us take this. Okay. So I have this data variable, right? So instead of taking this, uh, so big data, I'll just take data because that is pretty much small. So you'll be able to understand it easily. So I have data dot two underscore JSON. So as soon as I execute this, uh, it will take some time to execute. Let's see how much time. Okay. String attribute has 
no attribute to underscore json okay perfect let's see why this error has come again i'm not going to just uh you know uh edit this part instead what i'll do i have missed over here creating a variable like df okay so let me just make it as df1 i'll execute this and then i'll go over here initially i was just given string right the data was in string i'll make it as df1 and if i execute it you can see that i'm having this particular features like uh employee name zero james employee email g zero colon uh, james at the rate gmail.com now understand why it is coming in this way so suppose uh, uh if i go down and if i just display my df1 so if my df1 is this now in in this you can see that if i'm not providing any parameters over here and specifically i'm talking about this orient parameter now see this what will happen if i don't provide it what is happening is that it is first taking up this employee name column and then it is making a key value of zero colon james zero colon james so one one key value pair is created then it goes to the next column and then again it makes a key value pair of zero colon james at the rate gmail.com similarly for the job profile too now it is it is very much usual that whenever you are creating a json you should make sure that you create a json with respect to the records right the whole records so what you can basically do is that you can use this parameter called as orient is equal to records so if i paste it over here and if i press shift tab and again there are various kinds you can also make it as columns so all you have to basically click on onto here and you can basically see all the parameters of orient as and different different examples are also there guys you can check it out you can practice different stuffs into this and automatically you'll be able to get now you can see that orient is equal to split is there orient is equal to records are there now currently i'm basically using records so as soon as i execute this and now you can see the json now you see that employee name is equal to james email is equal to this job profile is equal to this. now the whole record json is basically created and this will get created record by record understand that okay it will be created record by record that is pretty much important to understand now what i will do is that i'll just make one more copy of this okay uh i'll just make one more copy and let me see from where it is starting uh okay i'll make just one more copy of this and let me just write comma and i'll paste it over here same thing i'm pasting it so that at least two records gets created I'll get I'll execute it again. I'm getting some error. Let's see what kind of error are there. Trailing data. So uh, properly, the, the JSON has not been created properly. So let me just try it. Oh, so, and instead, what we can do is that instead of taking this example, uh, if you don't want, if you want to work into the find uh, JSON data set, you can take this wine dot data. Okay. So wine dot data has many many records now what we can do is that we can basically read this by using df.2 underscore json orient is equal to records so once i execute this you see this okay so here uh, it will be a li little bit uh, cumbersome to just understand it directly but just make sure that you see the records first now you have 0 colon 1 1 colon 14 uh, 14.23 2 colon 1.71 now just understand this is getting records wise okay this is getting the uh, this whole uh, data frame is getting converted into json in a record wise so if you go and see over here this is your thing right so you, here you, the key value pairs you got like 0 colon 1 1 colon 1423 2 colon 1 1.713 colon 2.43 and this will happen with respect to each and every records okay and that will be the combination that will be the whole thing that will get populated so again if you don't use orient uh, is equal to records what will happen is that by default it will take the key value pairs of each and every value that, like we saw over here right we saw for this particular situation right so again try it out try to see how different types of uh, JSONs can be created because this is pretty much important guys because in the future lessons I'll be teaching you about flask right and once you get the model output you basically have to convert that into JSON and give it back to your front-end user so this orient is equal to records will be using there also so it will actually give you a very good idea about how to basically write a json or how to give the json uh, response uh, by using this particular techniques so let us go ahead uh, this was about json now the next thing we'll understand that we can also read html contents now when i say html content that basically means we are basically reading the tables from an html page and this is also a web scrapping uh, technique guys 
So if I go and click this particular link, okay, and this is pretty much famous. I have actually taken this from the documentation page of Pandas. So if you go and hit this particular link, you'll be seeing that these are failed bank list. Okay. And here you can see that you have a table. Okay. This is bank name, city, ST. This, this is, this is basically a table, HTML table, right? So if you use a read underscore table, right? This particular uh, function, what it does is that it tries to find out that how many tables are there inside this particular page. So all the table information it will grabs. How it will grabs? So basically, if you right click over here and if you do inspect, here you can see that you have a table tag, right? You have over here a table tag like th head uh, table ID, right? So this table in tag is basically retrieved but with the help of those pandas read underscore HTML function. Okay, so as soon as it finds it, it will just pick up all the tables that is available in that particular web page. And again, guys, it will return us a list of tables because there will be situation like you may have multiple list of tables in one web page, right? So it is always better that it will return the list of tables. So let me just execute and show it to you. So this is my URL. I'm just saying that pd dot read underscore HTML and I'm giving the URL, right? Now, if I write it will just take some time. Okay, it has got executed. So if I write type of DFS, here you can see that it is list, right? So let me just write it down DFS of zero. So the first table that you actually saw is the same information, right? The bank name, the city, cert, uh, acquiring institution, closing date, everything. Now in, inside this particular URL, guys, you see they are pagination also. But this does not care about pagination. It will pick up all the details that are present within that table tag. That is the most important thing that you need to understand, right? So if you just scroll down and see all the details, all the table information is basically extracted. Here you can see that it is 556 rows. If you want to verify over here, see in this, it shows 25 entries, right? So 25, if I, if I just make it as 100, let us just make it as 100, okay? And let us see. So here you can see that they are total 556 five, entries and that many entries we have actually got it, right? We have actually got it. So that is pretty much very, very good. Okay. Now, apart from this, you can also use this particular table, uh, this particular URL, which I found out in Wikipedia. And this is also doing just like a web scrapping, but only web scrapping with respect to uh, tables in a page. Okay. So this is mo mobile country code. And uh, if you scroll down over here, you have various tables over here. Again, see this, these all are tables. So if I want to find out this particular information, what I can do, I can basically use this URL, use pd.read underscore HTML, give the, uh, you know, give, give, give the URL over here and there are parameters like match. Okay. Now what this match will do, see what, what this match will do. This is very important to understand. If I go and mm, click over here in the, in this particular table tag. Okay. If I just do an inspect, let's see if I do an inspect, uh, if uh, let me just scroll down where is the table okay here is my table and uh, let me just show you what matching i'm doing i'm matching with the help of country right so if i go over here if i see the country the matching country will basically be taken from somewhere here you can see that uh, it will at least match one of the columns probably so it will be able to extract the for which table we are basically assigning okay so I don't see over here in the table tag itself, uh, but let us see some more details. So let me just see the data first of all, how the data looks like. So, okay, data is something this, and we are referring to some other information, some other table. So let me just have a look. So this is my mobile country code. Um, again, guys, I'm not going to edit this part because I want to show you the real thing, how it works, how it does not work and all, okay? So just uh, be a little bit patience regarding it. Okay. So yes, we are referring to this particular table itself, right? And it will basically match one of this particular text probably because I'm not seeing any ID over there. So I can see mobile country code. So mobile country code is here. And if you see that match is equal to country is there. Okay. If you, if you go and press this shift tab again, the description will be given with respect to this. And there is a feature called as match. Uh, you probably have a look into this, but definitely the match of country is basically taking place. So here is my country column. Okay. And once it matches, it is picking up all the details over there. So this was about it again. Uh, the, I'm using header is equal to zero because uh, the first uh, 
the first uh, index right first index uh, whenever it is coming in row basis that first index is basically taken as the header i have executed it let's see whether we'll get the output or not yes so whatever column name you can basically specify it will pick up the whole uh, table in short and it will give it in front of you okay so this is how it is basically done guys you can also use remarks you can also use this kind of column name and with the help of that particular match automatically the the whole table details will be picked up so uh, apart from the read underscore html we also have a property called as read underscore excel and this will actually help you to read the excel files and excel files are pretty much common file again as a, as in the terms of data source now in this excel file also you have something called a sheet name now suppose you in an excel file you have multiple sheets right so you can also number it you can give it as zero sheet name or first sheet name whatever data you want to basically pick up so over here if you don't provide any sheet name it is going to take up the zeroth sheet name and here you can basically execute it you can again see the head part now there is also one more technique uh, in this called as pickling now pickling is very very important guys because you'll be seeing that when we'll be creating our machine learning algorithm models later on we'll be converting that into pickles so what exactly is pickles all pandas object are equipped are equipped with two underscore pickle methods which uses python c pickle module to save data structure to disk using the pickle format so this in short is saving the whole data structure of any type of work you basically do suppose you are creating a machine learning algorithm suppose you have basically created an excel file or csv file if you convert that into pickle that whole data structure is basically created and you can also load that particular file again we'll be discussing a lot about pickle because in the machine learning algorithm we'll be converting each and every machine learning algorithm into pickle and then we'll be deploying that machine learning algorithm into any cloud servers also by and with the help of flask again we'll be integrating it with the front end uh, front web app so this is about pickle so suppose i have actually read the df underscore excel file over here if i want to convert this data structure into pickle what i can do is that i can basically use something called as two underscore pickle file uh, i mean function and the pickle file i'm basically uh, naming it as df underscore excel okay this is pretty much similar pretty much simple uh so once I save it, once I execute it, you can see that in my folder, this will get saved in, in the same local folder. This will get sa saved, right? Uh, so let me just see whether file has got saved. Uh, just a second. Pickle or uh, df dot df underscore Excel. So here you can see that this is a pickle file, which has got saved. So again, what I can do is that I can also read this pickle file. So if I read it, if I go and see the head part again, it is just going to use that same data structure. And it is going to show us the data so this is pretty much uh, important because we'll be learning this about this in future on uh, with respect to machine learning again and okay again remember guys suppose you have a huge data set and if you are doing a lot of pre-processing into that data set you can also convert that data set into pickle because it need not be like if your kernel gets restarted in the jupyter notebook then you also have to execute all the instruction from starting so in order to prevent that what you can basically do is that you can convert this into a pickle Okay, and you can basically load it later on. So this is all about this particular videos guys. I hope you understood it. We have discussed about various techniques over here. Now the next thing is that what you have to do is that you have to practice this. You have to practice this. You can practice it through various means. Again, uh, just search for it. The best thing is that you go through this Pandas documentation itself page. Um, the Pandas documentation page are available in the internet itself. You just go to Google and search for Pandas documentation okay and in this in this particular site you can basically search for each and everything and all the information are basically given it is clearly basically given so this was all about this particular video today we saw json html uh, excel files and pickle files so in my next video i may probably come up with mongodb and i'll be showing how we can enter records in mongodb how to retrieve the records from mongodb uh, after mongodb we'll also try to see how we can basically read data from sqlite and sql uh, sql database so this was all about this particular video guys i hope you like it uh, please do subscribe the channel if you are not already subscribed uh, i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead thank you one